Welcome to the Fireside Chat today. I'm glad you could join us. I want to give you some thoughts on thoughts today. Are you spending extra time with your thought life lately? Do you control your thoughts or do they control you? Do you influence your thoughts or do they influence you? When you come to Jesus, when you follow Jesus, when you're walking with Jesus, it should change the way you think. In a very uh, common verse that we hear, Romans 12, verse 2, Paul said, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Another translation says, be transformed by changing the way you think. It's a process. It's changing. Have you stepped into the process? Are you staying in the process? Are you growing in the process? Are you farther along today in changing your thought patterns than you were yesterday? This is hugely important. Right thinking leads to right living. When we think right thoughts and we do uh, right things, then we have right feelings. I like this quote that I heard one time. Uh, God is more interested in changing our mind and our thinking than he is in changing our circumstances. So let me just um, give you a few points that'll maybe help you as we kind of drill down on this just a little bit, okay? Number one, our thoughts control our lives and steer our emotions. Every word you utter comes from a thought. Every action begins in your mind. Your belief system is formed by thought patterns that develop as we think about and process what we hear and experience. Beliefs shape your life, even when they're not true. When you think things like, I'm worthless, or I'm ugly, or I'm clumsy, or God doesn't love me, or God doesn't hear me when I pray to him, or God's not going to take care of me. Or you think thoughts like, my marriage is doomed, or I'm such a failure as a mom or as a dad, or my friends just don't care about me. You know, we act on false information. It doesn't have to be true. If you believe it, it's going to shape your life. Proverbs 4.23 in the New Century Version says, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Here's the next point. Our mind is the battleground for sin. The battle, as it relates to sin, is won or lost first in your thought life. Think of it. Pride, lust, bitterness, anger, fear, hatred, worry, resentment. You know, temptation really happens in our mind. James said in James 1, starting in verse 13, he said, when you're tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, what's happening inside, he's dragged away and enticed. Then after that desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is full grown, it gives birth to death. But it all starts with a thought. The key to triumphing in your spiritual life is learning how to take control of your thoughts and align your thoughts with God's word. The secret of righteous living is right thinking. Our mind is the battleground for sin. Here's the next point. Our mind is the key to our peace and happiness. A managed mind leads to peace. An unmanaged mind leads to tension and stress and pressure, and conflict, and chaos. In Romans chapter 8, verse 6, Paul said, The mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit leads to life and peace. Isaiah 26, verse 3, says this, You will keep in perfect peace them whose mind is stayed on you. Now, I'm going to give you some practical application in just a second here. And if you put these things into practice, it will greatly increase your peace. Here's some practical helps. How do we manage our mind? Ready? Maybe you want to write these down. Number one, guard your mind from garbage. 
This is so important emotionally and spiritually. Uh, the things that have your attention usually hold your affection, right? Let me give you an example, and I don't want you to like beat yourself up or feel bad, but a lot of people can remember lines to a movie or their favorite show, but they can't name four of the Ten Commandments. They maybe can quote words from their favorite secular song, but they can't quote any words from a sacred song. The things that hold your attention usually hold your affections. And if there's bad things that we know aren't honoring God that we allow into our minds, we need to learn to keep them out, to guard ourselves from those things. But then also it's important to learn about what we put into our minds. And that's the next point. Feed your mind with truth. Psalm 119 verse 97 says, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Paul said, Finally, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. So getting good things in, memorizing scripture, uh, listening to worship music, doing inspirational reading, feed your mind with truth. Here's another point that maybe will help. Test every thought. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, Paul says we're to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. David said it in the Psalms in Psalm 139, verse 23. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. So when you have a thought... You should test it. You can ask yourself, where is this thought coming from? Is it a devil drop-in? Is it coming from my old nature or my old habits? Is it from a worldview or a world value that doesn't line up with my Christian convictions? We need to identify improper thoughts and then resist those improper thoughts. And then here's the last point. Don't just resist. Replace. Change the channel. It's like when you have the remote on the TV and, you know, if I'm watching TV and something comes on and it, uh, I know it's not really good for my mind to be thinking about or my eyes to be seeing, guess what I do? I pick up the remote and I change the channel. You can kind of do the same thing with your thoughts. It's like refocus. I like to call it the power of a new affection. Don't just try and sin less but develop a pursuit to love God more. Here's a great quote from Martin Luther. He said, you can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Let me conclude with a quote from a guy. His name is Frank Outlaw. What a great name that is, huh? Uh, he was the president of a grocery store chain some years ago in the southern part of our country. And he said this, Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. And it all starts with a thought. I hope that this has given you some food for thought today. Let's pray. God, thank you for... Uh, your help in our lives, but also in our minds. And God, I want to reach out to you today uh, for myself and on behalf of those that would be listening, that you would help us, God, to, to guard our thoughts and guide our thoughts in such a way that they're pleasing to you, that they're helpful to our spiritual development, God, that they lead to right thinking and right actions and right conclusions. God, help us to grow in this area, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, hey, thanks for joining us today. If this fireside chat or any of the fireside chats are a blessing to you, um, you know, you can share them with your friends. 
Uh, there's a little share uh, icon on Facebook, and you just click on that and maybe send it off to somebody that you think this would be a blessing to. So thanks again for joining us, and I can't wait till I get to see you in person. God bless.